So hello everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, our story about GateUp. So it's really a modest approach to show us where we are now after mm, nearly two years of business. And I will first uh, present the business, what we do, what we uh, like, uh, which customer, which market and blah, blah. And then I will really talk about more personal aspects and the way I personally see the uh, venture growing uh, process. So moving, walking is essential for humans. We all, we all came here walking somehow and we all have different way of moving. It's personal signature. You, it can be funny. You might know the sketch of the silly walks uh, from the Monty Pythons. It's uh, millions of views in YouTube. Uh, pure British uh, uh, humor. But it can be less funny when it's a disease that dictates the way you walk or the way you cannot walk, for example. And disease do affect mobility. Um, you can have the, the case of cerebral palsy in children, a neurologic disorder. You have uh, people who get traumatic or uh, even amputation. Uh, so then it's hard to get rehabilitation and so on. And you have elderly people. Of course, being old is not a disease by itself. But people uh, who are old do fall. It's uh, after uh, 65 years, which is not that old now, uh, in the society is one uh, out of three people each year. And falls uh, destroy lives, uh, but also cost nations billions in terms of uh, health costs. And, and what do we do for our elderly persons to avoid them to fall? Once they fall, it's too late. But on the other side, science tells us some evidence, like on uh, epidemiolo epidemiologic studies on more than 40,000 people. If you measure simply the gait speed, the speed at uh, which people spontaneously walk, and if you have their age, you can know uh, statistically if they have a low risk, a medium risk, or a high risk of falling. So it means instantaneously, if I had, can have the gate speed, I have the risk of the person. So why don't we do that? What happens if you go to the, to the doctors, you are quite frail and I don't know what happens. He will have a look at you, have a qualitative observation, but he doesn't have this figure. So it's where we come from with gate up is we can perform in the field with a small sensor, which is 19 grams a simple evaluation of the main uh, uh, gate parameters, and you have directly the risk associated to a person. And it uh, it's takes five minutes, it, it's instantaneously during a normal gate in a natural env environment. So how does the solution work? So you place the sensor on the foot. Those are the wearable sensors. It's a concentrate of uh, uh, 10 different sensors, accelerometers, gyroscopes, and so on. And then you get, the doctors get uh, analysis report. That for him is useful because he has the figures, but also he can show to the patient uh, if there is progress and so on due to, thanks to the treatment. This is the way we sell the product now. So it's a package where you have the software and the USB key and the two um, sensors. I give the example of one customer, uh, for example, which is, uh, we have not all the slides, huh? I'm white screen, not a big deal. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, Professor Bula, the head of the geriatric hospital in Lausanne. And for him, it's important to use that in routine so that they use the system of more than, more than 2,000 people today. Um, and for him, it's, it's good because he can predict the, the risk associated to a person without spending time is a physio who is doing the measure. He gets the report, he says, okay, we should do someone, something for this one. So the, he didn't spend time and time in clinics, it's uh, really a big deal. And he can valorize in intervention. So clinics are also fighting between each other to, get, to provide the best service. And if you are able to say, we have the best technology in the house to measure the symptoms, that's uh, an advantage. Then, of course, from what we are able to do, our know-how on movement science, you can go 
to different applications, other segments, and uh, analyze running motion, which is pretty cool. And we have other applications. I won't spend more time on that. But we also have something on swimming uh, nowadays. And yeah, that's it. So for those who are sleeping until now, just remember that we provide an easy tool for objective and quantitative assessment of locomotion. And we like to say that we are born in research. Myself, I am an engineer, I developed the technology. We are made in Switzerland. For Swiss people in Swiss market, it's something important. And for metrology in general, I mean, a Swiss watch is a Swiss watch, it's something. So we measure something accurate because we are Swiss, that's important. And we are used in clinics. So now, uh, let's talk more about the company and how we did it. We did that. So we founded the company one year and a half ago. We secured the IP. We can now have more than 4,000 people who are measured with the system. We did the new product development. We had sourced the production. First delivery in local market uh, after, you see, six months only, and in US uh, in this summer. So we are quite proud that after nearly two years, we are now more than four. Uh, people working full-time in the company, and we have uh, nearly 300,000 300, um, sales revenue, which is nice. In, ro in run, in lay, it's one million. So it sounds good. <laughs> okay, so now let me talk about the ongoing story behind and how we did uh, that. So after dinner yesterday, I was thinking about a cooking analogy, uh, and I say, okay, so we have the, the ID, the ingredients, when we start. The team is the cook, and the execution is the recipe. And hopefully you get something good uh, down there. So finding the good ingredients, what, what was my insight about that? In our case, it was a technology that was developed a long time ago uh, at EPFL, and I did my PhD on that. And what that helps is that we were able to publish and patent protected the ID. We can discuss more about that if you like. Uh, we were able to validate the prototype. I mean, when you say the lean startup, I think it's also something you can do not having the startup yet. If you have a master project and so on, that's all the steps you can go through. You can build your network already as a researcher. That's pretty good because the people you, go, you meet at the conference, they can be your customers of tomorrow and you get the feedback from them. So we had already the solid base of uh, techniques and IP. But then another ingredient that to me is, is really key is that since we have applications in sports and clinics, those are two things that I really like. I, uh, myself, I practice sports. I coach some kids in, uh, in athletics. And also in your life, maybe you want to do something useful for society. I don't know, for your grandparents or for the world in general. You don't want to change the world, but put your little uh, uh, step in it to, to to do something. So that was, to me, a really key aspect for the motivation. And it's what I call the spice in the ingredients. Something that, OK, the idea sounds good, but more importantly, I, I would love to develop those ideas. So those are the ingredients. Now, the recipe. So for us, it's a bootstrapped organic recipe. So it might change a bit of what you hear a lot about the startups that try to get investors and so on. But it's also something personal we wanted to grow uh, with our customers. So if we get money from customers, we grow. If we don't get, we don't grow. So it means the, the idea was not good and we'll do something else. So here I my, the must try to answer question when you start, I would say. So a checklist kind of. So who need it? And that's really important. Is it B2B or B2C? We, we hear a lot of things that apply to uh, a lot for B2C, like you need to seduce everybody, your mom needs to buy it, and so on. But in, in my case, my mom will never buy the sensor. She doesn't care, and of course, because she's not a doctor. But uh, there is a lot of business out there happening B2B, between companies. A lot of companies don't have the know-how or technology to do a certain thing, and you can sell that to them. And uh, that's really important, and it changes the way you do business, and the price also you can have. So how much will they pay for it? And will it be recurrently? That's also an important. And how much they pay, that's, it's something quite hard to, to ask well, until you don't have a uh, price and so on. Huh? So 
is it few francs, few hundred francs, few thousands, few hundreds of thousands? That's uh, it's it's not an easy thing, and you can you validate that uh, aspect only once you have the cash in your uh, account. I mean, how many will pay for that? So of course you have to multiply by that, and you can see which margin. It's really simple calculus, but it's really the basic. If at the end you have uh, something minus, uh, maybe do something else. Huh? Who else is having the same ID? And how do they perform? It's, it's really arrogant to think that your ID, you are unique and blah, blah. Probably many people had it at the same time. You know, it's a case of in physics, infinitesimal calculus, uh, Lebesgue and uh, Newton they invented it at the same time. Um, and it's because mostly most of the ID that come from technical innovation, they appear kind of the same time when it's mature in the world and blah, blah. So who is having it? And or if nobody seems to have it in the market, why? Maybe there are good reasons why. Because it's hard to produce, <laughs> because nobody wants it, or because there is a, a great liability issue and so on. So that you can learn a lot. And also, if you find another competitor that do well, then it's not a sign, ah, oh, he's already done it. It's most a good sign, say, they are doing a good business out of it. So that's a good idea. If I think I can do it, a bit better, that's a good thing. And finally, how far is my technology to market? And this is also hard from science because once you have a paper, you think it's, it's working, but to put it to the customer, that's another story. So in our case, for example, we had, so we, we, we said, okay, which are the two value that a customer like? It was assessment accuracy and the ease of use, practicity of use. And on the, both hands, we had the motion laboratory, which is a gold standard that you can have. And on the other side, you have wearable gadgets, maybe nose and eye plus, eye trail, and so on. But of course, you don't want to go to the doctor and that he diagnose you Parkinson's disease with an eye plus. You would feel quite... Uh, uh, bad. So we, we position in the middle of that. So this is, uh, yeah. For competition analysis, of course, you can study and compare product feature, what is nice to have, must have. I think uh, most of this is classic to do that. But I will, have, I will add two points that I think important is try to get confidential information about your competitors. Oh like what is the number of employees or turnover. And that's quite tough to get because most of the people try to hide it, usually because you, 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 you realize that the competitor is actually a company with one guy in it, not working fully time, but having a professorship next to it and so on. So it's, it's important to try to get this information to see if you, the players with you uh, are strong or not. And also the last point is act as a customer. So, not try to buy, of course, but try to, to, to act as a customer with your competitors to see how they do, how do they behave. Are they good with their customers? So, so do they support you and so on? So yeah, you can create an alias in Gmail and uh, your name is Katerina and uh, you, you, you ask them for a product and you see how they react and you see how they behave. And that really t tells you a lot. Around the uh, prototype to market uh, step. So, for us and our SAP, we said it should be as soon as we can legally, of course. And except if you're a Steve Jobs fanatic, you don't polish every aspect. It's really nice to open the iPhone and every chip is encapsulated and so on. But reasonably, you cannot do that when you're a startup, when you start. Huh? Beware of contractors and student job. Uh, I mean, the things that are essential and you really need it you don't uh, ask someone to do it. Even if it's cheap and so on, at the end you will have the shitty stuff that you will, you will need to do again, and that's not a solution. Gives your baby to the user so that they crush it. Of course they will. We have one customer that crushes the sensor every week, which is really annoying, but uh, <laughs> it's the case. And think about the, the distribution. Usually we can figure out pretty fast, but what happens after? Will they call you like, oh, it's not working, they're not happy, and so on. And if they call yourself and you say, but I'm busy actually, I'm in Romania, and blah, blah, it's not a good solution. You have, so you have to figure out uh, this before. And I uh, spend a little bit uh, of time also on the cooking team now. Because to me, building the cooking team is 
one of the most challenging and uh, critical uh, step. And in the success story you hear, usually it starts with a team that works well together and has a good competency. In my case, I was almost alone at the beginning. I had my professor, of course, who was behind. Yeah, it's great, we should. And my former supervisor, we came from the same lab, so we were talking the same language, and we all agree it was great. But that, that doesn't make, uh, make it to the market. Huh? So I was uh, alone to put my energy in it. So I start looking around. So this is 2012 now. And we found uh, other people. So one people from the medical world to, to place in the board because I say, OK, this is a potential customer. This is an ambassador. If I cannot convince him, I cannot convince other people. And, who jo and he joined us. And I found someone also from finance because, <laughs> OK, uh, I'm. I like manipulating numbers when it's one or zero or x, but not when it's millions and so on. So this was the founders uh, in 2013. And then you have to actually do the things. And most of the founders are usually good for advertising, uh, not adv advices and strategy, but they will not do the job hands on. So then you, you need the, the team. And I find someone for sales quite early on to go to the customer and get the feedback and do the support as well. Uh, to answer to the phone, so basically she's really doing a great job uh, of that. And uh, someone to help me on the engineering part also. And then now in 2014, we have grown the team and uh, well, with uh, one people in software since it's a key aspect and two other uh, engineers. So you see, like, yeah, it grows uh, organically but uh, quite fast. Some cooking styles uh, advices. Um, so this is really practical things, but I found quite useful. More than having a strategy is good, but there are few practical stuff you need to figure out quite fast. What is the legal structure and the equity? You have to decide this the first day, and it's almost the most important thing for the last days. But you need to find the equity that you are enough capable of doing what you want in the company. I have some friends that, since they don't have enough equity, they don't have the power in the company and they cannot move. But the other who has the power was a professor who has nothing to do anymore with the company. So that was a big deal. So you should find equity which is enough for you to, to move and, and make everybody happy. You need to fix the compulsory insurance, accounting, accommodation stuff. And to choose your source of cash, investor versus organic. In our case, organic, of course. Then. This is, uh, I must say, the most important thing is monitor the cash. Except you have 20 millions from, uh, from God, I don't know. You need to monitor the cash each month and be sure you, you are able to pay the salary at the end of the month. And you, are, and you are able to pay the insurance and the public stuff. Because otherwise, it's, you go this way. Huh? So this is really important. Do your homework, business plan, subside, market evalu evaluation, things you hear in every startup course. And this, you have to do it. At, uh, it's important, but it's not what will make the most difference compared to the other stuff. And grow, in my case, I think it's important. One step after the other is clear. If you get 20 millions and you just don't know what to do with 20 millions, probably you will jump and crash yourself uh, from too high. But if you go one step after the, uh, the others, then you master one step before you do the other. And I think that's uh, a secure way to grow. What's not essential, drop it, or do it quick and dirty, and keep the spirit. What we learned the hard way, what was our mistake, I would say after two years, it was the improvised cash management at the beginning. That was quite hot. And underestimated software development. Usually people say, software, go fast. Poo -poo, I have demonstrator. But actually, I found software much more uh, challenging than hardware. Hardware, you push a button, it works, it blinks, blah, blah, that's it. Software, you cannot imagine what the people will do with the software, many aspects. And now the piece of code, my algorithm, I was, yeah, it's 1,000 lines of code, really strong algorithm, it's that. And the rest of the software is that for the interface and for the help, for the fact that they click here and here and to be compatible with Windows, Mac, and blah, blah. This is, this is uh, yeah, much more uh, 
um, challenging than the core of the, the software. We have the lack of business experience in the board, so that was something I, I feel not so comfortable about, uh, that we try to build that up. And customers are not always sweet when they tell you about uh, the stuff. Even if they buy, uh, you say, yeah, you buy a 20,000 system, so probably he really likes it, but then they, whew, <laughs> they're quite harsh. So now we have a, quite a small cake, but a nice cake here, and uh, not ready for degustation yet, but we are pretty happy with that. And you don't need to have AAA everywhere. My point is that we, we probably have a good technology, good ingredients since it, it was built, etc. We are not maybe the best uh, people to cook it since we are not uh, experienced uh, ventures uh, uh, people and so on. The recipe, the organic recipe, you can debate about that. It's not the fastest way to grow and so on. But still, I mean, after one year and a half, we are more advanced than many of other startups that did it another way. So. That's it. I still have time or? Yeah, okay. So, and then it comes to the personal aspect because it's all about you, 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 you and me doing those stuff. And I, I frankly believe that we, we <laughs> do we live to work or do we work to live? That's an important question. No, ask yourself what you are good at first. So in my case, I think uh, I'm, I'm good at being enthusiastic uh, to, to, to promote the technology with the customer and so on and pushing it through with the team and so on. Negotiating skills, I think I do okay. <laughs> it's always, there are people you can't negotiate with. I mean, when you are too, uh, you are too weak, uh, you cannot. But, and I like uh, things being uh, nice and so on. So I like the design, I like the nice interface and so on. Then there are things I'm bad at or I might be not that bad, but I don't want to be. So I don't want to be the geek programming every day on uh, stuff. I don't want to deal about the legal issue and blah, blah. And then I get really bored about the administrative stuff. So to figure out that, really be frank with yourself, helps you to, to understand what you need to find uh, in your team. And when you need to, to, what you are good at, it's important. You can always try to strengthen your weak points. But after a certain age, you know, uh, you have better time to promote your good points. And it's important, you do, you, soon enough you are a manager of people, but you, first you need to manage yourself. And there is also this quality quantity uh, ratio, which is hard. I see many people who said, yeah, I work like hell, 24 hours a day and so on. I, I truly believe that it's not a good way to produce good things and good ideas. So. It's, it's good also to sometimes to go skiing on the lake, uh, <laughs> thinking about something else, and it's probably the, where you go the, the best ideas. And keep the focus on your line and what you want to do, but stay open to critics, of course. And it's quite hard, huh? because if you learn to every advice people give you, then you are not focused anymore. So you need to find the balance about achievement and failure. What is your personal achievement? Do I achieve well? Uh, if, I, uh, if I get as a product to the market, what, what is your personal things that you achieve that you will assess yourself? And I like the tripod life balance stuff. Is, uh, it was uh, once a, a VC that told me about that. You have a tripod, you, you are the, the front wheel, and there are two back wheel. One is the family and friends, and one is the work. And you can, you know, you can do two wheels like this. It's quite a... <laughs> Like only yourself and the work, but at a point you need to land on the free. And uh, it's important to keep uh, this balance uh, between those three aspects, I think. You can also do a real wheel without yourself. You only think about the work, your family, yeah, blah, blah, the work and not yourself, but it, it will not work at a, at a point. Uh, nervous breakdown for sure. So <laughs> it's important. And why did I started the company? So if it's gonna inspire, I don't know someone. I was bored of the big company. I worked a few years in, uh, in Renault, uh, 20,000 uh, engineers in the same place. I mean, nice project, huh? you develop a full car and so on. But this is, that was really boring. I also got bored from the academic job. And my dad was an entrepreneur, so I had this kind of spirit like, yeah, I want to do my thing. I, f I feel good about that. Uh, that sounds really cool. 
because I like managing a team of people. It's really a human adventure. Uh, all people have ups and downs, and it's not only ab about being harsh with people. You need to, to find the, the way people work and, and so on to, to make them the most productive uh, for, the, for the business. I'm not afraid of the unknown. Maybe I should, I don't know. But this is, I think, an important uh, uh, aspect. When you look at the, at the cash flow and you say, oh, next two months we don't have enough uh, cash. Oh, what do we do? OK, we keep the focus and we, <laughs> we keep the spirit. And I like to do things my way. And I think it's, it's important uh, also for uh, when you grow the business. And finally, my personal achievement, what I found is when I pay the salary at the end of the month and we create jobs and activity, that's really where I feel the best. I say, okay, we are doing the real stuff. No, it's, we are doing stuff, we sell the, stu we sell the stuff, and now I, I can pay salary with that. And th that was my personal achievement. What would have been bad reasons, I think, is to get rich, because I pay the employee more than I pay myself. So we might get rich one day, but I don't know. And because you think your idea is great. That was the starting point. I said, my idea is great, I will do. But it's not a good reason to start the company, I think, if you don't have other stuff above it. It's not enough. So what I would say is find your style. It's important. Don't go uh, like every other. Or take what you can and find your style, and good luck. And if you want to drop me a mail, don't hesitate. Thank you. see now like in the you know competitors of people who play in the same uh, area that is being quite hot at the moment so a few companies that have been acquired by really big players so it seems there is a way to exit and potentially an exit later on but at this time we are developing the business and I really don't care about exit so far so we will see in I, I give three to five years to, to really figure out if we should exit or not. And, uh, and also it's where we are between a startup and an SME maybe. It's because I don't feel bad about having a small business but sustainable. So. But you got some investment? No. No? No, we are purely growth on sales. Yeah. So then you don't have any constraints for that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. We are purely independent, so, so of course it's, I mean, yeah, you have to forget uh, about paying well people and so on at a point, and people need to, to trust you, to say, okay, I work with you, I know you cannot pay more and so on, because we don't have external money. But so far we are, I mean, we grow, and when someone will came in, we'll be stronger to discuss than if someone was here at the beginning, I think. We'll see. <laughs>